Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the channel and today I'm going to go my review of WCW's Fall Brawl 1993. Starting off the evening we'll go to our first match of the night. It is for the WCW Television Championship. It is Steven Regal versus Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. I thought this was a good match to start Fall Brawl 93. Back and forth matchup between Regal and Steamboat. Ricky lands multiple chops on Regal. Regal then lands European upper uppercuts on Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, but Ricky was keeping the pace of the match. Ricky then hits a crossbody off the top rope on Regal. Sir William then hits Ricky with an umbrella. The referee doesn't see it. Regal then capitalizes on this, hits a German suplex into a pin, pins him for the three, and your winner of the match, and at that time, new WCW television champion is Steven Regal. Hats off to Steven Regal for getting the win in that matchup and at that time becoming the new WCW television champion. Moving on from that, we go into our next match of the night. It is Charlie Norris versus Big Sky. I thought this was an awful match. Back and forth matchup between Norris and Sky with Norris keeping the pace of the match. But Norris ultimately lands a big boot on Big Sky, pins him for the three, and your winner of the match is Charlie Norris. Hats off to Charlie Norris for getting the win in that matchup. Moving on from that, we go into our next match of the night. It is a tag team matchup. It is Paul Orndorff and the Equalizer versus Two Cold Scorpio and Marcus Bagwell. I thought this was a good matchup as well. Back and forth matchup between both teams with Two Cold Scorpio and Bagwell keeping the pace of the match. And Two Cold Scorpio ultimately hits his signature 450 splash on the Equalizer. Pins him for the three. And your winners of the match are Two Cold Scorpio and Marcus Bagwell. Hats off to Two Cold Scorpio and Marcus Bagwell for getting the win in that matchup. Moving on from that, we're going to our next match of the night. It is Ice Train versus Shanghai Pierce. I thought this was an okay matchup. Back and forth matchup between Ice Train and Shanghai Pierce with Ice Train keeping the pace of the match. Ice Train ultimately hits a devastating power slam on Shanghai Pierce. Pins him for the three. And your winner of the match is Ice Train. Hats off to Ice Train for getting the win in that matchup. Moving on from that, we go into our next match of the night. It is for the WCW Tag Team Championships. It is R. Anderson and Paul Roma versus the Nasty Boys. I thought this was a good matchup. Back and forth matchup between both teams. Roma ends up hitting a power slam on Brian Nobbs in the middle of the ring. R. Anderson and Paul Roma were keeping the pace of the match. Jerry Sags ends up hitting Arn with a chair shot. The referee doesn't see it. Sags then hits uh, a driving forearm on Paul Roma. They go for the cover pin for the three. And your winners of the match, and at that time, new WCW Tag Team Champions are the Nasty Boys. Hats off to the Nasty Boys for getting the win in that match and becoming the new WCW Tag Team Champions. Moving on from that, we go into our next match of the night. It is Yoshi Kwan versus Cactus Jack. I thought this was an okay matchup. Back and forth matchup between Kwan and Jack with Cactus Jack keeping the pace of the match. Yoshi Kwan ends up hitting a step up Enziguri on it. Cactus Jack. But Cactus Jack ultimately hits his signature double arm DDT on Yoshi Kwan. Pins him for the three. And your winner of the match is Cactus Jack. Hats off to Cactus Jack for getting the win in that matchup. Moving on from that, we go into our next match of the night. It is for the NWA World Heavyweight Championship. It is Rick Rude versus Ric Flair. I thought this was a great matchup. Back and forth matchup between Rude and Flair. Flair up quickly applies a figure four leg lock on Rude, but Rude quickly breaks the hold. Flair then lands multiple chops on Rick Rude. It looked absolutely brutal. Flair then was keeping the pace of the match. Rude then hits a knee drop on Flair. Flair then applies another figure four leg lock on Rick Rude, but Flair's shoulders were pinned to the mat. Referee counts to three. And your winner of the match... Well, winner of the match and new NWA World Heavyweight Champion is Rick Rude. Hats off to Rick Rude for getting the win in that matchup. Moving on from that, we go into our main event of Fall Brawl 1993. It is the War Games matchup. It is Vader, Sid Vicious, and Harlem Heat versus the natural Dustin Rhodes, British Bulldog, the Shockmaster, and Sting. Number one, this was a great match. Great main event. Back and forth matchup between both teams. Dustin Rhodes and Vader both start this matchup for both of their respected teams. 
Shockmaster, though, ultimately applies a bear hug on one of the members from Harlem Heat. I believe it was Booker T. And your winner of the match due to submission are Dustin Rhodes, British Bulldog, Shockmaster, and Sting. A couple things I want to say about Fall Brawl 1993, man, before I get out of here. Number one, this was a solid event. It really was. And I'm a big fan of the Fall Brawl events. I thought they were all absolutely awesome. And more times than not, Fall Brawl always bought in the War Games event. I, th I think the War Games match is severely underrated. Um, it's a world-famous match, in my honest opinion. And to be honest with you, it's wrestling warfare, if you will. I mean, you got two teams going at it inside a double steel cage, closed in. It's absolutely awesome, man. And uh, this match did not disappoint. Now, I will say, with the main event, there's one person in that match that I did not agree on. And I think a lot of people can agree with me on this, is the Shockmaster. The Shockmaster... <laughs> Number one, not a good wrestler. Number two, he was he's always forever will be synonymous when he fell through that wall face flat. I mean, it was absolutely hilarious. And, you know, the Shockmaster, for what it's worth, I'll say this. When he wasn't known as the Shockmaster and he was more known as Typhoon and he was teaming up with Earthquake as the Natural Disasters, that was a solid, a solid tag team. Uh, I mean, the Natural Disasters are one of those top tag teams, in my honest opinion, in the early WWE days. Um, but as far as him going on a singles run before he, you know, obviously teamed up with, you know, Earthquake or whatever, uh, his singles run was awful. And Shockmaster, you know, obviously that gimmick didn't last long. As far as the other matches on this card, man, it was solid. I mean, the opening matchup, Steven Regal versus Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, it was a solid match, man. And I said this the other day, Steven Regal or AKA William Regal, whatever y'all want to call him. It's severely underrated, man. The guy is a mat wrestler, and he's a wrestling technician. I mean, the guy knows exactly what he's doing. He knows how to get it out of every move set that there's possibly is out there. And he was a great television champion, in my honest opinion. Now, did he come off as a heel? Yeah. But he was a great heel for WCW, and the fans towards the end started gravitating towards William Regal. And uh, it was one of the, that was one of the matches on this card that was like, man, this is a really good match. Uh, the other match I could have done without is Charlie Norris versus Big Sky. It was an awful match, man. At first, I don't know why I was thinking this because it was 1993, but when I saw Big Sky, I thought it was actually Triple H. And a lot of people don't realize that Triple H actually did wrestle with WCW back in the day. I don't think he did any pay-per-views, but he did wrestle for uh, WCW back in the day. And uh, at, first, I, at first glance, I was like, man, is that Triple H? And it wasn't. Uh, Charlie Norris, to me, was a knockoff of Tantaka, or a knockoff of uh, Chief J. Strongbow. It's exactly what I thought who he was, or Mark Youngblood, when he was teaming up with Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. That's exactly who I thought this guy was. And to be honest with you, the moveset that Charlie Norris had was just lackadaisical. The entire time, he was just like holding the guy's arm the whole time in an arm lock. That's all he was doing. And then somehow landed a big boot. The match was awful. I don't know why it was booked. And again, they were like hyping this guy up and being undefeated. That's saying a lot when you're going up against jobbers, in my honest opinion. Uh, the other match that, you know, I wasn't really too, you know, happy about was Ice Train versus Shanghai Pierce. I don't know who thought about bringing Shanghai Pierce and uh, Tex uh, Slazinger in as a tag team. Awful tag team. Awful idea. Awful decision. Ice Train. Now... Ice Train, to me, when he had this match, he kind of reminded me of a younger Mark Henry. Uh, he had, you know, the guy's a unit. But lack of wrestling, you know, knowledge. I mean, he's definitely green as grass. I'll say that. He didn't really know what he was doing in the ring. And even the power slam that he landed, yeah, it was devastating because, you know, the size and stature that, you know, Ice Train is. He's, he, I mean, the guy's a unit. But it was sloppy. And it wasn't like, you know, there really wasn't a whole lot of moves that's going on in that match for Ice Train. That's the only negative thing I could say about that match uh, with Ice Train versus Shanghai Pierce. Uh, Yoshi Kwan versus Cactus Jack. Big fan of Cactus Jack. I think Cactus Jack was severely underrated in WCW, in my honest opinion. But the thing that I got to laugh about was Yoshi Kwan. I don't know who the hell Yoshi Kwan is, but, and I don't know who created this guy's character, but my God, man. I mean, I, I laughed the entire time I watched this guy wrestle. Really. I mean, if you guys are able to watch Fall Brawl 1993, watch Yoshi Kwan versus Cactus Jack. And tell me you guys don't laugh at least a little bit. The guy looked ridiculous, man. I mean, absolutely hilarious. It was hilarious. It was ridiculous. And to be honest with you, the way they were building this matchup, it was Yoshi Kwan going up against Cactus Jack due to the fact that Vader was putting a bounty on Cactus Jack. 
leading up to the match or making sure Cactus Jack did not show up in their match that they were going to have at Halloween Havoc at the next pay-per-view after Fall Brawl 1993, man. But when I saw Harley Race come out with Yoshi Kwan, I'm like, where the hell did they find this guy at? Because he looked absolutely ridiculous, man. Uh, the other matches on here, too, that I really enjoyed was uh, Rick Rude versus Ric Flair. Fantastic match, man. Rick Rude is severely underrated. I don't give a damn who you are. The man was severely underrated. A great Intercontinental Champion. Could have been multi-time world champion, in my honest opinion. The gimmick worked. He was one of the best heels in the business. And people either loved him or hated him. You know, they hated the way that he wrestled. They hated the way the guy looked. But the guy can wrestle. You know, his finisher move, the Rude Awakening, that devastating neckbreaker that he would lay on his opponents, man. You really weren't getting up from that. And to see... Rick Rude go up against the Nature Boy, 16-time World Heavyweight Champion Ric Flair. Fantastic match, man. And both Flair and Rude really took it to each other in that match, 100%. And the other thing that, you know, even as, you know, when you're, you know, back in the day when I was watching wrestling, the one thing I always remember about Rick Rude was his ring attire. His ring attire was synonymous in professional wrestling, man. When he came out to the ring, you didn't know what kind of ring attire he was going to, you know, have. Or what was going to be on his ring attire. Like a lot of times, like when he wrestled uh, Ultimate Warrior back in the day. And he had Ultimate Warrior's face on, you know, his ring attire. Man, it was awesome. He probably had, if not the best ring attire of all time in all professional wrestling was Rick Rude. In my honest opinion. But the match between Rude and Flair, absolutely awesome. And Rick Rude ended up picking picking up the win. Because Flair's shoulders were down in that figure four leg lock. And obviously the main event, War Games. You got Vader, Sid Vicious, and Harlem Heat versus Dustin Rhodes, the British Bulldog, Shockmaster, and Sting. With that being said, the War Games match is synonymous, man. I mean, it's still being used today from, like, NXT. Now even, from what I understand, the main roster for Raw and SmackDown, they might be using the War Games matches for uh, Survivor Series. Synonymous match, man. But WCW made that match world famous. Not WWE, WCW. And the match is awesome, man. It's absolutely awesome. As far as a rating is concerned for Fall Brawl 1993, man, I was kind of back and forth on this one, to be honest with you. I was going to give it a 5. But I think I might go five and a half on this one, man, because this was a solid event. Obviously, there's a lot more fall brawls to be watched and seen and a lot more fall brawls that happen besides 1993. But this one was, I mean, I was really back and forth on this one, man, but I'm going to have to give fall brawl 1993 a solid rating of a five and a half. But this is my review of WCW's fall brawl 1993. I hope you guys are out there staying safe. Be careful and remember, stay classic. Peace.